-hmm. Welcome back to Living in Racine. I'm Kimberly Mann. And I'm Russell Mann. And we are here to help you guys learn about another new area, or not new, but a area of the Racine market. So today we're going to be talking about Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant, exactly. Because Mount Pleasant is one of the other villages in the area, yeah. along with Sturdivant. Used to be a town, you know. It did. We're going to talk about that in a second. Yeah. So, um, along with um, Caledonia, Sturdivant, uh, Wind Point... Elmwood Park. These are all areas in the city and in the surrounding area around the city of Racine. Yeah. But today we're going to talk about Mount Pleasant. And it was actually, let's, should we get into like the history and the stats in a minute here? Sure. All right. So in a minute, we will be right back and we will give you all the stats and all the history about Mount Pleasant. Yeah. Uh, here we go. All right, so we're back. And Russ, what do you think? What should we start with in Mount well, Pleasant? How about going over the history for a start off? Okay. So, so it was a town originally, and it was established in 1842. That's a long time ago. That was it actually, was. A, that's actually a lot older than I thought it was. Yeah. Because Racine was only in like the 19, or the 1830s. So, or 1820s, but that's only 20 years later and already Mount Pleasant's yeah. being established. That's mm -hmm. kind of amazing. I didn't think they, they would have pushed. They set up a lot of farming communities, agriculture. Um, yeah, but to have formalized even into a town yeah. with voting, because once you formalize into a town, you have voting privileges. Yeah. So that's, that's really early, actually, I think. Yeah, and it's not a town anymore. It's not a town. It was um, established as a village yeah so it was moved over to being a village and to be honest with you this is probably something we should research i don't even really know that there's any significant difference between being a town and a village but i'm assuming there must be some form of government that's necessary if you're a village versus a town it had to be i know it had to be elected by all the people living in in the town uh, in the town because with a town, oh, you Mount have a Pleasant, board. And they voted, and there is a board for Mount Pleasant. There's six members plus a president. Yes, but I'm saying that happens even when you're a town. Because where my parents yeah. live up north, they don't even have an incorporated mm -hmm. town, and they have a town board. So it's still, you yeah. know. So this was established in 2003. Which is shocking. September 2003. So it's only been... 21 years for 21 years technically 20 right yeah. now it's not till september that it becomes september a village September six my brother's birthday oh is it yes it wow. is well not 2003 he's yeah. older than that but but yeah september 16th so um so yes yeah, so it was incorporated in 2003 um it covers 35 square miles and 33 of those square miles is land and 1.62 is water i think there might be a little more that's water but more because when a new subdivision goes up, water usually gets added just because technically they need a drainage pond. Mm. They need a, a retention pond to yeah. make sure the water is not going up. And that houses. doesn't include the bit that touches Lake, Lake Michigan, obviously. Yes, obviously does not cut. <laughs> yes, there is, yeah. and there is a good, uh, what would we say, maybe two miles of Lake Michigan Along front. Along Sheridan Road. And yeah, so there's got, the whole yeah. section on the south side of Racine um, that is that kind of comes around and wraps around. Yeah. It. So, yeah, absolutely. So I always deem that uh, like Mount Pleasant is more or less shaped like a horseshoe. The way it's, it it's wraps complete, around, but it's not a complete horseshoe. It's not, I would say it looks more like an the letter R, a small letter R, because it goes all the way to the lake on one side of Racine and then wraps up around Racine, but then stops. But then stops before it gets back to the lake. Yeah. Because then it's Caledonia uh -huh. that, that covers the top half. And so it it's encircles more like, Sturdivant, the whole of Sturdivant as well. Sturdivant is like an island. With yeah, it's just like this little <laughs> island in the middle of Mount Pleasant. <laughs> yeah. Not really sure how that happened. 
But I'm assuming, I do know that Mount Pleasant expanded its area and that Racine and Mount Pleasant, um, and it might have been in 2003 when they became a village, mm. because that seems about the right date from what I was told. Um, Ro Mount Pleasant and Racine kind of renegotiated their boundaries, which is why Mount Pleasant has such bizarre boundaries. Yeah. I mean... Because there's a, also a small piece of Mount Pleasant that's all on its own. Yeah. And that is over by the airport. Yeah. It's just bizarre. <laughs> it is. It is like really the bizarre. most bizarre map. Near rapid drive and the airport. Yeah. There's this small section that's all on its own. Yeah. The road to get there, you have to go through Racine uh -huh. or Caledonia. Yeah. But once you're there, you're in Mount Pleasant. So yeah. I'm sure what it is, is it's a little pocket neighborhood that wanted mm -hmm. to be a part of Mount Pleasant. And so that when wanted they... wanted to remain, yeah. Or yeah. wanted to become part. Because that's one of the reasons, I know this from the history I've talked to other people, one of the reasons that um, they are these weird pockets of things that go into Mount Pleasant is because certain neighborhoods said, when they were doing this negotiation, certain neighborhoods said, no, we want to be Mount Pleasant. And other neighborhoods said, no, we want to be City of Racine. Yeah. Like they wanted the very different services. And so... It's not even the whole neighborhoods in some of them. Some of them, it's like it cuts partway through the neighborhood and like zigz it's the weirdest zigzaggy thing I've yeah, ever seen. Yeah, it is. It's the weirdest boundary lines I've ever seen for any of that. So, but anyway. We'll um, put up a map so you can see. Yeah, absolutely. We'll we'll put a map. Um, yeah. Maybe maybe for you on your thing, we'll put a map up on the, that side. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the census, however, in 2020 was only 27,000 people. That's not a whole lot. It's like no. a quarter of the amount of people in Racine. And yet their land mass is actually more than, I mean, their amount of land, their square footage of land yeah, is much more. Yeah, a lot of it more. was rural, which is yes. now turned industrial. Well, and there's still some agricultural, mm -hmm. but it is primarily, um, it is primarily Instead of it being primarily agricultural now, a lot of it in the last 10 years is built up to become industrial. We've had yeah. things like, well, first of all, when Foxconn came in, they conscripted all that agricultural land around yeah. from KR to 11. And that was all, or KR to Braun, actually, technically, that was all conscripted to be for Foxconn. Now that Foxconn scaled back its approach and has the one section that was decided that Microsoft was going to go on the other. And Microsoft is now building like a fury. So, yeah, they are. Um, so we've got that huge section that used to be agricultural that is no more. But you still have some on the northwest side of Mount yeah. Pleasant. Um, the northwest, so like north of 20, where it hasn't quite, like out by Borzinski's and stuff. Yeah. Well, that's not 20, that's northwestern. But anyway, it's, it, well, it is out, but it's still up in that area. Yeah, up over near towards 94. Borzinski's and, is in Caledonia, yeah. but it's but it's more on that side. There's still mm -hmm. some agricultural. But honestly, it's getting to be less and less and less. There's definitely not larger. And when it comes to if you want to do a USDA loan, you can't do it east of the interstate. If you want to buy there a house some, with a USDA but loan, many, but there's yeah. there's almost none west of the uh, mm -hmm. east of the interstate now. It's almost all if you want to go, it's yeah. west of the interstate. So, um, so a USDA loan is pretty much a west of the interstate if you're just buying a house, yeah, um, and not buying a ton of land with it. Um, so it does have a lot of land. This surprised me though. How old people are? Like the average age? Yeah, yeah, it surprised me a bit. Yeah, you know, median age is only 45.8 so years old. So apparently millennials are have taken over Mount Pleasant. Yeah. Essentially, because they have a lot of because the two biggest demographics are 25 to 44 and 45 to 64. Those are the two biggest demographics and I mean it's that's like over 50% of it is yeah. that alone. Mm -hmm. And when you know the median age is 45, you know quite a bit of that is you're going to have some that's lower and some that's higher. Yeah, I mean 20% are under 18, so Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's also tells you that also tells you a good amount of them are millennials because yeah. you've got millennials that have started families and those are all the under mm -hmm. 18 families yeah. and stuff. So you've got 20% of the population is under 18, only eight, only six and a half percent are between 18 and 25, which also tells us that people are not staying here to go to college. They're going away somewhere to go to college and then they're coming back. Yeah. That's what that really means. And if you're a single guy looking for a girl, come to Mount Pleasant, come to Mount Pleasant because the majority of, of people living in Mount Pleasant are female. Yeah. So there might be some single females here. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> just a few yeah, anyway. We're setting up a dating agency. There we go. Yes, well. that's there what it go. is. Dating agency from Mount Pleasant. <laughs> um, so what are some of the other key features? Well, the education. So this is another thing yeah. that's interesting about the Racine area is that Mount Pleasant, like in some areas, each city you live in matters because as because that's where your school's going to be. Mm -hmm. But in Mount Pleasant, that's not necessarily true because there are two high schools or three high schools in Racine and two of them are covered by Mount Pleasant neighborhoods. Yeah. So in some Mount Pleasant neighborhoods in high school, your kids would go to park. The vast majority of them, they'll go to case. Yeah. But there are neighborhoods over here by the lake that go to case and mm -hmm. not to park, which is a much yeah. closer location wise. So, again, it's a really screwy system as far as the schools go. Um, and even the fact that, I mean, some of them go to Gifford, which is up in Caledonia, and the other middle school is in Mitchell, which is way on the south side here, yeah. which is yeah. very definitely Racine, Racine, mm -hmm. Mitchell Middle School. And so it really, that's why the Racine Unified School Choice becomes kind of, kind of re relevant. Yeah, it becomes does. very yeah. relevant. Um, because obviously Gifford can be covering some of it for the K through eight. That's part of the middle school as well. But then for the elementary, you've got Dr. Jones, you've got Westridge, you've got Schulte. I think you're missing one here actually on our list. You're, Am I? you're missing Johnson school, which is over in Racine. I think that also has, because it's right on the edge of Mount Pleasant there. Right. I think they some wasn't little, on the list. It wasn't on so, the list. No. It's automatic. So maybe not. Mm. But I would have thought Johnson School was just because of its location. And then we got Mitchell and Gifford for middle school. Yeah. And Mitchell's solidly. I mean, that's like way in the middle. Yeah. Like, the fact that if Johnson's not on the list, that's surprising because Johnson is close to the boundary of Mount Pleasant and Mitchell is not. Right. That's why I say that's kind of weird. Mm. So, um but anyway, so what are the reasons, though? Because I will say the one thing that Mount Pleasant... There's a couple of things. When it comes to houses, Mount Pleasant has the best has better taxes than the city of Racine. Of course. That's yeah. a reason that people go to Mount Pleasant sometimes. Yeah, village taxes are much cheaper than... Mm -hmm. About a third cheaper. Racine. About a third cheaper. Yeah. So a house that would be 3,000 taxes in Racine would be probably closer to 2,000 in Mount Pleasant. Yeah. Um, now it's usually the reverse. It's usually the taxes are 4,000 here and they're closer to 3,000 in Mount Pleasant because taxes aren't as cheap as 2 and 3,000 anymore. Uh -huh. um, but taxes are a cheap reason. The other reason is there are newer construction houses in Mount Pleasant. Yep. There's more newer construction. And when we say newer, I mean from like the 70s, 80s, 90s, as opposed to the city of Racine has stuff that goes all the way back to the 1900s primarily. They've got a lot of ranch homes as well. And a lot of ranch. Yep, exactly. Whereas when you get to Mount Pleasant, you get a lot more two stories. You still have some ranches, mm -hmm. 1960s ranches, but primarily you're getting the two stories that were built in like the 2000s yeah. and, you know, all of that uh, stuff that was like newer construction. And if there is going to be any new construction at this point, it's primarily going to happen in Mount Pleasant because there really isn't land in Racine. They're actually building up Mount Pleasant. It's getting bigger. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. like that's the only land that's left yeah. because in Racine you could do a, a construction, but there's no space that's big enough to do a housing development in Racine. It's all been taken up with current houses. Yeah. So you may have, you know, individual houses that are custom built or new yeah, houses one-offs yeah like one-offs because maybe the house burned down or it was destroyed or demolished or mm -hmm. whatever someone bought a lot and but not neighborhoods not full neighborhoods to be no. developed so if you want to build new construction you are looking at mount pleasant primarily and still a little bit in caledonia yeah but we've already covered caledonia so we already talked about that before but mount pleasant's a really big area for that a lot of new industry has come in as we were talking about. Oh, so yeah. besides gift, besides Foxconn, besides Microsoft, that's going up like a house on fire. I know mm -hmm. that's like going down, but really it's going up like really quick. Um, we also have a lot of other, um, how should we say, it? warehousing and infrastructure and yeah, there's logistics buildings, logistics going yeah. up along the I ninety four corridor. Yeah, and you know I said that there. the Whole Foods version uh, UNFI or yeah. Unfi, UNFI, which primarily serves places like Whole Foods and Trader Joe's, but Whole Foods is their biggest client. Um, you know, they actually, I thought they were Mount Pleasant. I'm not entirely sure if they're Mount Pleasant or if they're Sturdivant because they're in that kind of borderline area. They're right. outside of Mount, they're outside of where I would call Sturdivant. So I yeah. think they're Mount Pleasant, but it's hard to know. But there's lots of industry, so lots yes. of employment which is what's building up Mount Pleasant, because you've got people like, you know, even though we've said Microsoft, Foxconn, you've got S.C. Johnson, you've got They CNH, were already established there. Yeah, Whole Foods, Advocate Aurora, 
Yep. Um, Sida, North America. Ascension. Ascension. Insincorator has got two, and Puttmeister as well. Uh, yep. Puts, yeah, Puttmeister, and, and there's and loads, loads of, of them. Others. Yeah, and there are some that have left the city of Racine and moved to Mount Pleasant because it's still close enough for their employees, but they have more. If they want to expand, yeah, and they don't have any room to expand in Racine because yeah. the land's taken up, then they move to Mount Pleasant, uh -huh. and that's where they're going. So, but what are some of the fun things to do here? Because I will say. For us, we primarily shop in Mount Pleasant. We do. There's yeah. really not a lot of shopping in the city of Racine itself. There's some on no, the north you can side. You go downtown on Main Street and stuff like that. There's really right. only one. But, there's only one uh, grocery store that is actually in the city of Racine for the south side, and that's Piggly, that? Piggly Wiggly. Oh yeah, on Eleven. Yeah. So the, yeah, the rest because there's of, no longer one on twenty. Right, because Pick and Save is Mount Pleasant. Yeah. Um, Festival. Aldi is Mount Pleasant. Festival Foods is Mount Pleasant. GFS that we go to. There's Pick and Save. There's two Pick and Saves. There's one up by yeah. Spring Street. There's a Piggly Wiggly up off of Spring Street as well, which is Mount Pleasant. Uh -huh. So all of those are all like off of Newman Road and Spring Street. I think it is for the Piggly Wiggly. Yeah. Um, all of those are Mount Pleasant. So the vast majority of grocery shopping. Is in Mount Pleasant. Yeah. And there you oh, have. and I don't know if it's Mount Pleasant or Racine, but where the new Woodman's is going in, at the old mall, I'm not sure if that's technically Mount Pleasant or Racine. It's hard to say. Yeah. Because I know they were in a battle with Racine on taxes, so I don't know if that got annexed over to Mount Pleasant. That's one of those gray areas. It is. It's yeah. right on the edge there. But there's loads of there's other loads shopping. Of you've got restaurants. You've got Barnes & Noble. You've got Longhorn Steakhouse. You've got almost all of the restaurants are in Mount Pleasant. Yeah. A few of them spill into Racine, because I think Chick-fil-A might technically be Racine. Once you get down 20, just like the other side of Green Bay Road. No, I think Chick-fil-A came under Mount Pleasant. Did it come under Mount Pleasant? Yeah. Okay, so it's under, so Chick-fil-A is under Mount Pleasant, which means the Wendy's it's across the street. You've got those downtown, obviously they come under Racine, like Correct. Madrid and places like that. But So what um, about the Walgreens there on 20? Is that Mount Pleasant? I'm not That's, sure. Yeah, exactly. But almost all of the shops, um, I mean, you've got Ulta, which is in Mount Pleasant for us girls and our makeup. Um, the vast majority of the bars and the restaurants are in Mount Pleasant. Mm -hmm. um, not to say that Racine doesn't have them, but what Racine has more is Racine has all like the mom and pop places. Mount Pleasant has all of the chain stores just about. Yeah. Anything that's a chain, anything that's a national Red or Lobster, regional, like that. Yeah, yeah, any national or regional chains um, are in the Mount Pleasant area, not in the city of Racine itself for mm. most of it. So that's what makes it really interesting. Of course, there's loads of bars, there's entertainment. Um, technically, the um, the movie theater is not Mount Pleasant. That's the third event, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So yeah. so is the so is the train station. That's part of that literally weird goopy thing that we'll talk about with Sturdivant, yeah. but Mount Pleasant does have most of the shopping, most of the newer residential homes, and so it's no wonder that millennials and, you know, people are moving and people move it. there. Yeah. yeah. It is definitely the move-up neighborhood. People usually move out uh -huh. of Racine up to Mount Pleasant because they're improving their home and the better, nicer homes are, uh, you know, yeah. normally outside of Racine. So, but also Mount Pleasant has another section of it the part right near the lake that's not newer that's not nicer that's just kind of laid back chill lake park lake park it's one of our favorites we've already done a video on lake park yeah so make sure you check that one out and um so if you want to part we did that one separate because lake park is kind of its own thing. its own little community it's yeah. like its own little special yeah. thing even though it's technically in the taxing zoning of of mount pleasant but it's its own little thing so yeah um, so we did a so whole you video can on buy that. A house reasonably priced over there. Yep. Um, be, and be close to the lake because houses and south of there really expensive. Re yeah. They, Those are the custom built houses the ones along the lake. On the lake, they they go in for you know half a million and up, easy. Yeah. Like no matter what the size, there is a little section as well in Mount Pleasant over south of Green Bay, south of Eleven. Um, over by St. Lucie's, by the Catholic yeah, Church. Yeah. That dips in, that is Mount Pleasant as well. And those are very affordable homes. You can still find a home over there for 150 to 200 
and yeah. still be the taxes of Mount Pleasant. Those are really, I really think there's something that people are missing out on. I think there's a trick because some of those houses are a little older, don't look quite as nice, but I do think people are missing a trick if they don't. If they don't look at them and yeah. at least see because the what taxes they have to are offer. so much cheaper and the houses yeah. are decent houses and they might need some cosmetic updates but once you pretty much every house you move into you're gonna do your own mm -hmm. stamp on it anyway you're gonna make it yeah. your own so you know those are really good bargain so it gives yeah. people an opportunity to have low taxes a and area. a low price house yeah especially so. if you're getting a mortgage sometimes your lender will turn around and say yeah you can spend this much but your taxes can't be more than X amount. Yep. And well, that area. Mount Pleasant is a great area to look. Yep. And that area is also really good because it is easy access if you work in Illinois. Go straight down Sheridan Road. Yep. Or you're right off of 11 there and not that far from KR if you prefer to take that to go out to 94. Um, and it's just like really easy access to jobs, really yep. quiet little neighborhoods. Or you're neighborhoods. up by Northwestern and you can go straight out to Milwaukee. Yes. Yep, that part of Mount Pleasant. That's like um, Jamestown. Yeah. Not Jamestown. Yeah, Jamestown. Yeah. Uh, Franksville. Franksville. Sorry. <laughs> Franklin's a whole other city. Yeah, not even yeah. in Racine County. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty much it about, um, about Mount Pleasant. It's got loads of jobs, loads of shopping, really decent houses, like really nice housing, um, you know, a, a fairly pretty flexible board. Although, yeah. I will say... If you watched our video a few weeks ago about <laughs> painting, you'll know one thing that Mount Pleasant wasn't very nice to one of our customers about. If you haven't, we're not going to spoil it. Go watch the video we did on painting yeah. a couple of weeks ago. We'll put a link at the end. No, we're not going to put a link. Go no. find it. Go to our channel. Okay. Find it. It's really not hard to find. It's got paint splashed all over the outside of it yeah. um, on the thumbnail. But, um, but yeah, go check out that video because... One of our people, he was in Mount Pleasant. That's where his house on Spring Street is. Mm -hmm. And he had a little run-in with the village board. Pretty just unusual. Done. <laughs> We're just going to stop it at that. But anyway, um, thanks so much for joining us, guys. And hope you enjoyed this. And so join us again next week. Yeah. And what are we doing next week? It's an, an, another architecture one, isn't it? Yes, okay. it's architecture. So next week's going to be another architecture video. So look forward to that. I always love the architecture ones. It's one of the reasons I'm in real estate. One of the reasons yeah. we're in real estate is because I love architecture. Houses, yeah. yeah, I love architecture in general. So yeah. um, that's something I'm more. Pa you like architecture, but I'm like, I think it's from my mom. I think I'm in love with it because of her. So yeah. But anyway, join us again next week, and we'll be doing another architecture thing. Uh, give us a like, comment, subscribe, turn on that notification bell. Don't forget, it does help us out. Um, we actually are not monetized on face on YouTube, um, which is okay. But we do appreciate the support, and it does spread the word to other people. And join us again next time on yes, indeed. Living in Racine. Bye for now. Bye for now.